So this is fresh video of a recent nuclear test out of South Africa. Yeah, you heard that right. Usually the phrase nuclear test conjures up images like these and friends like these. But no, we didn't upload the wrong video from our safari vacation or something. These are researchers carrying out a test of nuclear technology with these rhinos. What you've just seen here is um, something new, something completely novel. We are now using radioisotopes inserted in the horn to make the horn to devalue the horn in the eyes of end users because we've got to do something new and something different to reduce poaching. Yeah, radioactive rhinos. And this test isn't to turn these guys into souped up Donkey Kong characters. This team of veterinarians, researchers, and nuclear experts are inserting radioisotopes into the horns of 20 rhinos to help combat poaching. This guy here is the director of radiation and health physics at South Africa's University of the Witwatersrand and heads up this risotope project. And speaking of heads up, if you don't enjoy watching videos of people drilling into rhinos, there's plenty of other fun, lighthearted content here on At The News Refresh. Please subscribe. Like this little piece about a retired couple that's trying to visit every single Texas Roadhouse restaurant. But if you do want to see a rhino get drilled, great. Here's this team tranquilizing one of them. Here's that professor drilling a hole into the horn. And here he is inserting the radioactive isotopes. And you thought going to the dentist was scary. Now the urgency for a project like this stems from the fact that according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, there used to be around half a million rhinos around the world at the start of the 20th century. But today, that number's dwindled down to about 27,000, driven by the awful demand for rhino horns on the black market. South Africa, which has the largest rhino population at around 16,000 of the things, loses about 500 of these creatures a year to poachers. The kind of standard response by, by the kind of conservation system in South Africa has been to basically dehorn rhinos on, on scale. This professor is Dean of the Science Department at the University of the Witwatersrand, who observes that dehorning rhinos is a disruptive solution. And we haven't had much of that experience in the past, but now um, after a few years of having having done that, we can see that it's really impacted very negatively on the social structure of, of rhinos. And this is this is awful, really. I mean, rhinos are very territorial, and, and the moment uh, you begin to kind of impact on the ways in which they can defend their territory. Instead, with radioactive rhinos? The rhino remains in, uh, intact with its horn. It's able to continue yeah. to engage with its uh, with its uh, fellow rhinos in a, in a in a socially meaningful way and in that sense it's it's a non-destructive non-invasive way in which we're trying to deal with the problem not only does this radioactivity make rhino horns seem a little less valuable kind of like the long-term value of any given radioactive ape nft but this test could ultimately help curb the trafficking of these things in the first place Notes our professor here who talked to the Associated Press. We are also doing this because it makes it significantly easier to intercept these horns as they are being trafficked over international borders because there is a global network of radiation monitors that have been designed to prevent nuclear terrorism and we're piggybacking on the back of that. Now, as for the radioactivity itself, don't worry. They're not creating a whole herd of horny Dr. Manhattans. The founder of a rhino sanctuary known as the Rhino Orphanage, which is allowing its rhinos to be tested here, observes that the doses of this radioactive material being inserted into these rhino horns are very low. You get a thing like nuclear medicine nowadays, so it's not. Nuclear and radioactivity not only kills, but it also cures. So it's, it's perfectly safe for the rhino but it's not safe for the poacher because they can't move the horn and this is really why it's all about it, it it's a magic idea magic of course that some critics believe is indeed an illusion like the chairperson here of the private rhino owners association a conservation group who doubts that nuking up rhinos will deter poachers they have worked out other ways of moving rhino horn out of the country, out of the continent, or off the continent, not through traditional border crossings. They bypass the border crossings because they know that is the area of their highest risk of uh, uh, confiscation or interception. For the next six months, our team of experts here is going to monitor the health of these rhinos to figure out how valuable this project is. And if it pans out, they ultimately hope this process can be replicated to protect other wild species vulnerable to poaching, like elephants. So one day, if it seems like Mike is glowing in the dark, that actually might be a good thing. And if you're wondering how I knew his name was Mike, I don't. But as we recently told you here on your news refresh, please subscribe. Researchers now think that elephants call each other by unique names. Mike's not that unique, but hey, how about that?